guys welcome to my garden it is about a million degrees out here today is July oh excuse me August 11th and um, I wanted to bring you out here to show you one of my absolute favorite vegetables to grow it's called the shiny snake bean it's also sometimes called the python gourd python bean um, anyways it has a lot of names but it is one of a kind it's one of my favorite like most funkiest things to grow and it's absolutely delicious so let me turn the camera around so you can get a closer look so here's the trellis in the front yard in the large beds as you can see because it's the middle of the day it's very wilty right now but these right here are the second round of uh, snake beans that i've had come in last year i only got i only was able to germinate one plant and i only got three beans off of it but i grew them in the backyard that had less sun um, so this year i moved them to the front so they'd have full sun and as you can see this beautiful sucker right here is why it's called a python bean or a snake bean this is fairly heavy i left this one on the vine because if you leave them like this you know it's a gourd technically um if you leave them like this they will harden up some and the inside turns you know um, this bright orangey red color and it gets very pasty like a tomato paste now if you eat them when they're a little bit bigger than this about twice as long as this and twice as wide um, then they're nice and crunchy um, you know they're kind of like a green bean i don't really know how to explain them other than you know they're just very crunchy and fresh and delicious everybody always says that they have a weird smell they definitely do to me it's not a stinky smell it smells almost kind of like peanut butter in a way you know um, and you can really smell it you know on your hands and stuff but I wanted to bring you over here and show you the flowers. They're so beautiful and lacy and delicate. They're just gorgeous. Um, mine, as you can see right here, here's a little bud that hopefully once it gets pollinated, we'll have some, some fruit off of it. I am really excited this year because I've got way better success. I've got lots more coming in, you know, made a huge difference having, um, you know, full, full sun. Just the best sun I had was what I did for these guys this year. But anyways, um, mine are pollinated mostly by hummingbird moths at night. So it's really cool if you come out here at night, um, they're flying around pollinating all the flowers. I do try from time to time to hand pollinate, though it's a little tricky because um, I can't it seems like a lot of them are the male flowers and I haven't been out here very often where both flowers have been open at the same time so I'm lucky though thankfully we've got lots of hummingbird moths to do the job and this year they are killing it as you can see so one thing I want to mention about growing this incredible vegetable is the seeds are very big and chunky um, you're definitely going to want to nip them with um, some some uh, toenail clippers and put them in a wet paper towel and let them soak in a bag that was the best way to germinate them for me um i have not had incredible germination rate i wouldn't say they are necessarily that easy to germinate um but you know once you get them started if you baby them you know you'll get at least a couple coming through and then you'll end up with some awesome uh, vegetables like I've got here. So anyway, you guys, um, if you're interested in these, I purchased these seeds off Baker Creek. They do tend to sell out, so get them early and get a bunch of them. Um, that was the main reason I'm letting this one get so big. Um, I want to dry them out and I'm going to try to collect some of my own seeds this summer. So anyways, wish me luck. Hope you guys like this video. Please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you're into this kind of thing and I hope to see you soon. Take care.